Namaste, everyone, and welcome to Anchor Delight for Friday. And here we are Friday. You know, we've been very busy, so we've been doing many different projects. However, Friday has always been our day for cleansing, emotional cleansing, uh, also cleansing for yeah, stuff that prevents us from being prosperous. And for a lot of you who are just joining us, let me just put things in perspective. Why do we do cleansing or healing? Uh, as we go through life, we create thoughts, we create emotions, right? You always hear people talk about manifestation, and they like to quote the law of attraction. So in order to really understand this and take advantage of it, <clears throat> hmm, no sound? That's strange. I said there's no sound. Okay, hold on. Let me just check, make sure there's sound. Uh, one second. Okay. Hmm. All right, there should be sound uh, already. Maybe you should use clear audience. No, I'm kidding. I forgot to turn the sound on. All right. Anyway, before we start, let me ask for the, let's ask for divine blessing. So, what comes out of my mouth has minimal, hopefully, no distortion. To the divine supreme God, divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints of all traditions, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Sokok Sri Mahaguji Meiling, we humbly ask for divine light, divine love. Thank you for your compassionate, purifying light and soothing, healing energy. We think in full faith, and so it is. All right. So let me just, uh, <clears throat> again, address, usually with thousands of new people coming in after uh, Tony Robbins, uh, UPW, joining us for meditation. So let's put things in per perspective. As we go through life, you know, we create thoughts, we create emotions in response to what's happening around us. And as we go through all these circumstances that we go through, we create positive thoughts, negative thoughts. Of course, oftentimes thoughts and emotions are combined, right? We think of something, there's a certain feeling, either a little or a lot. That's what you call the mind. The mind is just a combination of the data produced by the mental faculty of the soul as well as the emotional faculty of the soul. Like you have a mental machine, emotion machine. Every time you say, oh, my mind, usually it's these two, usually. There's more to it than that. But for now, for most people, that's good. So as we go through life, we create thoughts and emotions. Well, I just use the word thought forms. So these thought forms could be positive, could be negative. Positive as in, as in it helps us, it nurtures us or other people. Negative in in sense it could hurt us or hurt other people. Okay? So these thought forms, um, they linger. So if I sit here and go, oh, that's a nice painting. So energetically, somebody who could see energy will see it floating in my head area around here. And they linger until, let's say I didn't put too much energy into it, it starts dissipating, okay? However, whenever somebody pisses you off, <laughs> really gets you angry, the manufacturing process is the same. You can't, this, oh, I can't believe this guy did this to me, and so on, so on, so on. So, the difference is the amount of energy you put in. So this thought form, which again is a combination of thoughts and emotions, now sits in your aura, but unlike the first one, you just, oh, nice painting. You put so much energy into it, it doesn't dissipate. It sits there. And over time, if you were to think of something similar, not necessarily the same person who hurt you, but let's say you're driving and somebody cuts you off and, oh, man, that jerk, how does he know that my, the front of my hood is sacred, that no car should get ahead of me, <laughs> whatever. So something of a similar frequency or vibration, it will now connect to that first thought of anger. That's why when people talk about law of attraction, yeah, do you know what the heck you're talking about? They just look at the positive side. They don't realize that negative thoughts, negative emotions also work <laughs> with the law of attraction. So at some point, these positive thoughts, these positive, uh, these negative thoughts, thought forms, they now bunch up together. Positive ones with positive ones, negative, negative, and they populate the aura. As they populate the aura, that's how you look out into the world. As you look out in the world, you will see through this as lenses. Make sense? So if you have more positive thoughts than negative thoughts, that means your outlook into the world is positive because every time you see something, it's now tainted by these positive thoughts. That's what positive people are. Now, if the thought forms in the aura, this cloud you're looking through is mostly negative thought forms, complaints and whatever else, then as you look out in the world, then you're a pessimist. As simple as that. Now, then you add one more layer to it, 
you know, people like quoting the law of attraction, whatever you we have in the aura, that acts as a, what's the word I'm looking for? Do you just simplify science? That's a bigger surface of attraction. So if you have more positive thought forms in your aura, that means you have a bigger surface area to attract positive energy. If a person likes to complain, they have all these thought forms, that, then they have a bigger surface area to attract negative energy. Make sense? So having a big aura is only good if your aura is clean. Make sense? Because when you get somebody who's really angry, really pissed off, and like <laughs> raging, they have a big aura. In fact, that's why you say, I don't like to <laughs> touch that guy with a 10-foot pole. Or I can see them, I can feel them a mile away. It's because their crap radiates everywhere. Now, the opposite is also true. What makes a saint a saint, not only the goodness of that person, but their kindness and their love radiates throughout the, throughout the aura. Make sense? Now, why are we sharing this with you? If we don't clean this up, disintegrate it on a regular basis, it's just like not taking a shower for years. When you do meditation, you're dismantling and flooding these things, uh, flushing these things out and retaining the positive energy. So that's why we want to um, dedicate as much as you can. Again, I'll be traveling in the next two weeks on Fridays to do emotional healing, to focus on particular negative emotion that people go through, and another one for prosperity healing because money is important. I know some of you go, wait, I came to this channel uh, for spirituality, not about money. Well, I got news for you. Spirituality and materialism are two sides of the same coin. You have a good heart. You're very kind. You like to help people. But you're dead broke. Completely useless. As simple as that. The goodness within you needs resources to manifest. That's why this morning we do emotional healing to release anger. This afternoon, evening, depending where you are, we do prosperity healing to remove thought forms of poverty consciousness. Both are important. Okay? And I'll talk about this again this afternoon. A lot of you heard me this before, what my teacher said, money in the hands of good people change the world. Money in the hands of good people change the world. Good intention alone, with no, no resource, you produce nothing. Zero. Nada. <laughs> okay? So forget all these people who are broke, they just like to use quotes like, whoa, money will corrupt you, blah, blah. Uh, you're so broke, you don't have money to corrupt you. So don't worry about it. I know that sounds harsh. That's the reality of it. People who are broke use spiritual principles as they quote left and right spiritual teachings to just kind of support them being broke. At the same time, they're going to go, yeah, but I want to help a lot of people. Yeah? What are you doing? How are you going to help people? You can even help yourself. I know I lost a few of you already, but I don't care. My job is to do my job. And that's the reality of it. If you have a good heart, you have resources, you can transform a lot of lives. Period. That's that. Okay? So this morning, or this session, we're going to focus on releasing anger. Now, the question is why? It's very simple. Anger... When we don't release anger while it's still a little seed, it degenerates. You know, if a person has a lot of anger, it degenerates into hatred and resentment. And if you still don't release it, it keeps degener degenerating into vindictiveness, means you want to get even. You still don't, don't get rid of it, it degenerates into maliciousness. That means like, oh, now you're thinking bad things to do to the other person, and you'll justify it. And then it's still not released, it becomes ruthlessness. That means anything goes. The seed is anger. We don't release anger. It goes like that. Yeah, but if it's justified, 
yes, it might be justified, but there's a way for you to handle it, get the same result of correcting the problem without rotting inside. That's why one of my favorite verses to remind myself is what the Lord Buddha said. You are not punished for your anger. You are punished by your anger. Get the idea? In other words, when you're angry all the time, you're not being punished for being angry. By you being angry, that anger seeps through your aura and your chakras and your energy level drops and it corrupts your mind. Make sense? The good news is this. Anger is nothing more. I know some of you won't like this, but just keep an open mind. Anger is nothing more than a certain emotion and thought created by the soul. That's it. When somebody, so there's a stimuli or a stimulus triggers you, you observe it, and then you have two choices. Choice one, create that anger and response to it, or look at it and says, hmm, I don't like this. What should I do about it? That's it. It's that simple. You go, yeah, easy for you to say. Nobody pitch you. Oh, I had, I had my share. In the earlier days before I met my teacher, <sighs> right? After I met my teacher, he just basically <laughs> disciplined me all these years. He always kept reminding me, you are the soul. You're not these emotions. You're not these thoughts. You are not the products that you created. At some point when you realize, hey, anger is something I created, I can choose not to. Make sense? So today, or this morning, when, after we do a quick meditation, We'll use energy to flush these negative thoughts and emotions of anger out into the salt water or visualize a violet fire in front of you. Now, I'll leave you with one thought. And that's the screen I shared with you earlier. If you get easily triggered, you are that person's, you are that person's prisoner. In other words, you are literally controlled by the people that make you angry. When somebody pisses you off a lot, they own you. Something to think about. When a person triggers you all the time, they control you. How would you like that? <laughs> oh, that pisses me off. Okay, then. Do something about it. You said that's leverage. I mean, think about it. You can't stand this person. They piss you off all the time. But the fact that they piss you off, that means they control you. <laughs> How cruel is that? The most important question is, why do that to yourself? I can't help it. Okay, leave. Go find another teacher. We don't want you. Some people say, oh, I can't help it. Okay, bye, bye, bye. Go find another teacher to babysit you. Don't waste my time. You know why? Because when you say, I can't help it, that means you literally just owned it. You made the emotion and thoughts become you. Instead of saying, I'm not the body, I'm not the emotion, not the, I'm the soul that creates this. I choose not to create this anger. That means you're regaining your power. But if you say, I can't help it, you're not part of this group. Bye. Leave. I don't want people... In reality, you are a spiritual being of divine intelligence. That means you can think. You can create thoughts you want. You are a spiritual being of divine love. That means you create positive emotions that you want. You are a spiritual being of divine power. That means you have the ability to use your will to direct your focus anywhere you want. That's it. It's that simple. That's why one of my favorite phrases is, seekers are achievers. Seekers are not complainers. <laughs> Spiritual seekers are achievers. They get things done. They get things done 
by not having a victim mentality. They realize they have the ability. You all have the ability to create the thoughts you want, create the feelings you want, create the actions that you want. Period. Full stop. Let's meditate. Put your hand like this. I am that. I'm not the body. I'm not the emotion or the thoughts. I am the soul. I am a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love, divine willpower. I am that. The soul. The spiritual self. I am connected in one to my higher soul. I am connected in one with the divine spirit in me. I am a child of God. I am one with God. I am one with all. There is only oneness. Just be still. Now open your hands in blessing. Just say we are one. Imagine the earth in front of you. Be aware of your heart in your hands. Just say our hearts are one. Our souls are one. There's only oneness. So be aware of your heart in your hands. We're going to do the meditation twin hearts as taught to us by my teacher, Grandmaster Master Chok Sui. So be aware of your heart, your hands. Project beautiful pink light and fill up the entire earth. We will use the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Wherever there is hatred anywhere in the world, anywhere, within me, outside of me, anger or hatred within me, outside of me, let me sow unconditional love. Where there is injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. Where there is doubt, let me sow faith. Where there is despair, let me sow hope. Where there's darkness, let me sow light. Sadness, let me sow joy. Just be aware of your heart, your hands. Fill the earth with peace, with love, with a spirit of forgiveness, with hope and with faith, with light and lots of joy. So be it. So be it. Be still. Just allow your heart to pour this love through your hands to your family, your friends the people you work with, to all the people in your city, your country, and the entire world. May all be divinely blessed with peace, with love, with a spirit of forgiveness, with hope and with faith, with light and joy. So be it. Now be aware of your heart. Take a deep breath. Be aware of your crown. Exhale. Just be aware of your crown. Your crown is filled with so much golden light. And just allow that golden light to flow down through your hands and fill the entire earth. Just fill the earth with golden light. From the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being on earth be blessed with love and with kindness. May all be blessed with great joy and happiness, with understanding, harmony, and divine peace. May all be blessed without exception, so be it. Just fill the earth with golden light. So be it. Now, gently be with your heart and your crown. That's why we call the twin hearts, human heart and spiritual heart. Be with your heart and your crown. Take a deep breath. And as you exhale, imagine golden light pouring out of your hands, even brighter than before, filling up the entire earth. Just say, our hearts are one, our souls are one, our spirits are one. There's only oneness. From the center of the heart of God, through my spirit, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being on earth be blessed with love and with kindness. May all be blessed with inner peace and inner healing. May all be healed of any pain, sorrow, or suffering they might be going through. So be it. May all be blessed with understanding, with harmony, goodwill, and the willingness to do good. So be it. So be it. Be still. Be 
Blessings be to all. Bless your friends, your loved ones. If you know anyone going through difficult times, bless them with this golden light. May their life be blessed. May they be healed of any pain, sorrow, or suffering. May they be blessed with a better life. So be it. You know of countries and people in the world who are suffering either through political reasons, calamities, or wars. Fill those areas with golden light. May all be blessed with divine light, divine love, divine mercy, and compassion. So be it. So be it. Now put your hands down. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Just imagine a beautiful golden light, a golden flame just floating above your head. Be aware of your heart. Send a stream of love from your heart up to the crown and into that golden light. Ah. Be still. Just look at that light. Be aware of that brilliant light. And listen. You, the soul, the spirit yourself, are listening and meditating. Oh. the light, be aware of the stillness, Om. Your consciousness is now completely dissolved into that brilliant light. You are that light. Be still. Oh. Maintain your stillness, maintain your awareness. Just form the intention, any anger or resentment in your energy system, in your body, your emotions, your thoughts. Just form the intention that you want to release them. That's all. You don't have to recall every incident. Just form the intention, any anger, resentment that is in your system, conscious or subconscious, you are willing to release them.
Now be still. Just be super receptive. Imagine a violet fire in front of you. Beautiful violet fire in the floor. Or if you have salt water, just be receptive. The brilliant divine energy is pouring down to your crown. Your crown chakras are being cleansed in your brain. Any anger, resentment, negative thoughts and emotion, your crown chakras are disintegrated, extracted, expelled to the salt water or the violet fire in front of you. The divine energy is pouring down to your Ajna chakra in between your eyebrows and the back of your head. Any anger, negative thoughts and emotions in your crown, your forehead, your Ajna, your back head chakras are being dissolved, disintegrated, expelled to the violet fire or salt water in front of you. So be it. The divine energy is pouring down to your throat chakra. In your jaws, any type of anger, expressions, resentment, hatred are now dissolved, disintegrated, extracted, expelled to the salt water or violet fire in front of you. So be it. Your crown, forehead, ajna, back head, throat chakras are continuously being cleansed. The divine energy is pouring down to your back heart. Your front back heart and your front and back solar plexus chakras are saturated with this brilliant divine energy. Simultaneously, this energy is going to your higher and lower astral bodies, your emotional bodies, is dissolving, disintegrating, dismantling any anger, resentment, and hatred energies, expelling them to the salt water or violet fire in front of you. So be it. Your front and back solar plexus from back heart, higher and lower astral bodies are, are continuously being purified. The divine energy is pouring down to your navel, your sex center. It's pouring down your spine, down, down to the base of your spine, your basic chakra. Any energies of anger, resentment, especially expressed through actions, are dissolved, disintegrated, expelled through violet fire or salt water in front of you. So be it. Just be still. Disintegrate, disintegrate. Disintegrate, disintegrate. All these anger, resentment energies on all levels. Just be still. Om. 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 Allow it to happen. Make sure your legs are uncrossed so the energy drains out. Now raise your hands like this. Put your attention on your crown. That's the input. The hands and the feet are output. Verbally chant with me. So what happens when you do this? The energy will just flow through us. As you chant Om, it's disintegrating all this anger and negative emotions. Okay? Ready? Go. Verbally chant. Om. still just say I'm letting go I'm completely letting go of any anger resentment and hatred in my system on all levels so be it picture it going to a violet fire or if you have a salt water in front of you let it go to the salt water say I'm letting go now, when your eyes look at me, go like this. Say, cut, disconnect, cut, disconnect, cut, disconnect into the fire or the, fire or the salt water. All right. How do you feel? 
Okay, let's give thanks to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother. Thank you to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for divine protection. To my teacher, Master Chok Hok Sui, Maguji, Mei Ling, thank you. In full faith, so be it. All right, open your eyes. How do you feel? Give me some feedback. <laughs> Let me know in the comments there how you're feeling. You see, it's as simple as this. Most of you probably feel like, hey, how come it's blank? It's quiet. You see, it starts with a premise by realizing no matter how pissed off or angry you are, no matter how happy you are, these emotions were simply manufactured by the soul. Period. You understand that and know it. You control them. Those emotions don't control you. Then you can choose to be happy. Then you choose the positive emotions you want. Fill yourself with it. Now you're in a beautiful, happy state. Instead of allowing these thoughts, sometimes you're happy, sometimes you're sad. That's it. It's that simple. So tonight, we're going to focus on releasing laziness and procrastination. Because a lot of you are very skilled. You have talents. You have abilities. All of us do, right? But the ones who are successful are the ones who do it. <laughs> Period. Like Tony Robbins says, taking massive action. Now, you might have noticed in the bottom portion, you see, you see it says seven days of purification. Most of you know this already. In, there's three powerful full moons coming up. Well, one just went by. The recording is still there for the first full moon. Next month is the Wesak Festival, the most powerful full moon of the year. And the month after that is uh, Goodwill or the Festival of Christ. You have three powerful full moons. Now, I know some of you are getting confused. But I thought Wesak is um, the one in May. You see, there's the astrological Wesa, where that's the most powerful moon of the year, the full moon of Taurus. Now, this year and a few years before, every how many years, instead of being in May, the actual astrological full moon of Taurus is in April. So the one in May is being celebrated by the Buddhist tradition as a Wesak festival. So luckily for you, this year you get to <laughs> celebrate it twice. Now... The way to understand is, at that time, there's more energy pouring down during that particular full moon than any other full moon. So, it's like throwing fertilizer to the ground. Everything is magnified. Good and not so good. So, every year, we started this during the pandemic because we noticed a lot of people are amplifying a lot of crap in their system. That's how we came up with the seven days of purification. Okay? This seven days of purification essentially is 21 hours, give or, give or take. For seven days before the Wesak festival, we have the lecture and meditation of the Eightfold Path, the teachings of the Buddha. It's essentially eight, they're not commandments, they're instructions and pathways that we can take to improve our health, our relationships, our finances, and our spiritual connection. Then, for a lot of you who say, yeah, I need extra help, I'm getting crap out of my system, we've also included healing. So this is what we, today was just a taste of it. For those seven days, day one would be anger and rage. Second day, anxiety, stress. Third day, hatred and resentment. Uh, fourth day, it says excessive desires and addictions. Fifth day, laziness, procrastination. Sixth day, guilt, resentment. And seventh day, it's like a car wash. <laughs> Whole body flush. So this is to prepare you now for the ones who cannot join us for whatever reason. We'll also uh, do our best to have uh, part of it on Anchor the Light. Because we have seven days. Imagine seven days, you'll have morning healing, evening healing, and then the lecture and the teaching during the day. Okay, so there's the link there. There's a QR code if you want to join us. Again, do not ask. It's not going to be in social media. Because for whatever reason, social media has a tendency to, to censor. I know a lot of you are saying, yeah, you were talking halfway, you muted it, yeah. So, all right. Anyway, so we will see you for the second session, which is uh, 7 hours and 15 minutes from now. We will be doing prosperity healing, removing thoughts and emotions that hinder us from being successful. We're going to focus on laziness and procrastination. Again, here's the best news of all. I've shared it over and over again. Any thought, any emotion, any tendency, any habit that we have, 
are all fabrications of the soul. Either we created it consciously or we subconsciously created because of certain circumstances. Or somebody's been injecting it into us. They keep telling you no good. You keep telling you you're, you're not worth it, whatever. So these thought forms accumulate and crowd the aura. So if you don't disintegrate them, your affirmations are useless. I affirm this. I affirm. They're useless. You know why? That little thought form you create of affirmation, I'm good, all these thought forms that are seen in the aura, eat them up. That's why we always say big fish eat small fish. Okay, that's that. So we will see you for the second session uh, in 7 hours and 14 minutes, 13 minutes. Namaste, everyone. You all take care. And we will see you in a few hours. God bless. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.